This week's reflection is on a very simple theme that I'd invite you to think about. Uh, there are many ways of seeing the growth and spiritual life of a human person, but it could be seen as hero, uh, servant, and mystic. That's applicable to lay people as it is to religious. In a particular way, I guess, with priests as well, it's very striking how that resembles the path, the trajectory that our life should take, that develops properly. Hero, I seek to be a hero in the way that I serve and make a, a big difference in this world. And that's exciting. Young people want to do that. They want to, to change, change everything and make things better. And it's wonderful to see the dynamism of the hero of the young person, the young priest, the young mother, the young father, they just want to do everything just so right. And that's, that's good. Kind of a, an urgency to become a, a kind of a hero, doing those great things, accomplishing wonderful things. Priests are notorious for that too. I mean, not notorious, but they're, they're thrilled to be uh, the best parish priest they could possibly be. And they, they, many of them do a wonderful job. But then we move into the next phase of our lives, which is, as we mature, um, having a calling to become more of a servant. We realize that there are limitations in the great things that we can do. We become more limited. We realize, you know, I'm not going to change this world as much as I thought I, I might, or I would, or would have liked to. And, and so there's a kind of a gentle calling to become more servant. How can I be of service to, to you and to help you to grow in your life? Uh, where unfortunately things can derail in the lives of some individuals, Catholics as well, is that rather than moving from hero to servant, they become increasingly narcissistic and can be very damaging in their lifestyle and uh, very self-focused and can become grandparents or parents who become very demanding. And uh, But the real call of Christ is from hero to servant. And we try to serve in many different ways. But then there's a new phase. It's some and not all feel called to, but it should be the natural fulfillment of the journey of the Christian is from servant to mystic. From servant to becoming a mystic. Let's say more and more enveloped in the mystery of God. And to see that more and more in our lives, you know, um, as a young boy was asking his sister, his asked her sister, do you think we can see God? And she says, you crazy? Nobody can see God. Oh, okay. And so then she, uh, the little boy went to see his mom because he wasn't satisfied with that answer. He said to his mom, do you think we can see God? And the mama said to him, yeah, I think sometimes we can see him, you know. There are moments where we really experience God's wonderful presence in our lives. The little boy wasn't completely satisfied. He went to see his grandpa. And his grandpa took him on a little canoe trip and around the lake. And then the little boy urged him, was urged to ask the same question to his grandfather in the inner urging. He looked at grandpa and said, Grandpa, do you think we can see God? And the grandpa kind of scratched his head, thought for a few minutes in silence, listened to the loons in the distance. He looked at his little grandson and said, you know, grandson, I've come to a point in my life where I don't see anything except God anymore. Ah, there's a grandfather who'd become kind of mystic, you know. And whether we like it or not, we will all of us lose our energy and our strength as we get older. We will all start losing our capacity to, to, to drive and to, to walk and to and to do the normal things of life as our hearing becomes impaired in our eyes and we become more and more limited in our abilities. Perhaps dementia might hit us or something like that. We become more and more silent. And the silence can either become a very aggressive, self-focused silence where I'm angry at everything and at the world and because the Lord is really not part of my life. Or maybe I become a mystic where I just say, Take, Lord, and receive all that I have. I can no longer do all those heroic things I did before. I can't even serve the way I'd love to do so. But, Lord, take and receive 
I offer my body to you. Take and eat it, O Lord. And so this wonderful movement from hero to servant to mystic. So where are you in your life at this point? Young and zealous, and I want to make a big difference in this world. Go for it. Make this big difference in the world. You will. And then maybe you're at a point where you just feel called to be of service as best you can, giving what you have to others and being of service to them. And if you've gone sour and become very narcissistic, maybe it's time to get railed back onto God again. Back, if you've derailed, get back onto the rails with God. If you're coming to a point where you're really feeling just a loss of so much, the real calling to just be contemplative in the presence of the Lord and seeking to do His will. And I finish with this beautiful text from Psalm 119. Just one or two verses for your meditation. Your will, O Lord, is wonderful indeed. Therefore, I obey it. We don't focus on my will and what I want to do, but gradually letting go and giving it to the Lord and saying, Lord, you do with me what you want. I am simply your vessel, your servant, to do whatever you wish. So may the Lord bless you and guide you as you continue this, your journey in life, um, this transition from hero to, to servant to, to mystic is not the only way of seeing the growth of our spiritual life, but it is a helpful tool to know the trajectory that we have towards the Lord. So may the Lord bless you, bless your families, and may, have you, may you have a wonderful week this week as you fall in love more deeply with the Lord.